Welcome to our uh, Lean Transformation webinar. Uh, we're pleased that you're able to join us today. My name is Peter Watkins. I'm a senior coach at the Lean Enterprise Academy. I'm joined today by uh, the lovely David Marriott, who's also a senior coach, and our CEO, David Brunt, who manages the activities at LEA. So many of you will be aware, but for those that are new to the Lean Enterprise Academy, Dan Jones uh, founded us back in 2003. And Dan is the author of many lean books and he set up LEA as a non for profit organization. Uh, and our purpose is to help uh, people become self reliant in their lean journey. We have products and services that we offer to customers and they're based around three key value streams. And these are learn, teach and coach and share. And at the intersection of these, uh, those processes is our lean learning journey platform where we're writing down in a usable form the key knowledge required to learn and implement lean thinking. The learning materials uh, that we have are organized around the lean transformation framework, which is both the research and developed with our partner organizations. Uh, and you will learn more about that hopefully today in the webinar. So the materials and processes that we've developed are based on a fundamental principle, which is give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. So we've done a lot of research to understand how to learn lean most effectively. We know from practical application that skill and capability development is best described as a journey. That's a guided learning path progressing from awareness and knowledge of a subject through understanding, being capable and finally being able to teach and coach others. We have always offered on site support to help people on this progression. But in 2019, we started to develop a plan to offer this online. During the coronavirus pandemic, we had uh, accelerated this activity and developing a new website, an online platform uh, with our uh, courses and development of our modules there. But as lockdown eases, we'll combine the online learning material that we've already published and the remote coaching and short interval on-site delivery at the place of work. So, Today, put to today into context, the materials are all about knowledge or what we call skill level one. However, you can develop understanding by learning yourself using our online learning journey platform courses. We have a plan to create uh, a lean transformation framework course, and this webinar is part of that development process. But to become capable, however, you need to practice. So this is best done on real issues at the workplace. We offer teaching and coaching for this, and we offer a process to help you once you're capable to be able to train and teach coach, and coach others in your organization. This approach mirrors what we know from the way that excellent lean companies like Toyota develop capability. It's simple and effective, and it uses plan, do, check, act methodology at each stage. So with the introductions out of the way, let's move on to today's content. So first of all, David Brunt is going to explain the background and introduce the Lean Transformation Framework to us. He will hand over then to David Marriott to explain our Teach Poster concept before providing uh, an introduction with myself on the Lean Transformation Framework in terms of understanding the purpose, process and people of it. We'll then take some questions and uh, David Brunt then will share some insights around the Lean Transformation Framework with one of our partner organisations. We'll have a discussion at the end and uh, based on a, a question that we're going to pose to you. Uh, so let's going to hand over now to David Brunt to get us started. David. You're on mute, Dave. Schoolboy error, that. So thanks, Peter. Um, one of the things we are trying to do with the Lean Transformation Framework is to be conscious of the potential failure modes of applying lean thinking and practice so that we can avoid them. Um, there are lots of potential failure modes, but um, here are some that we see most frequently. Uh, firstly, saying that we need to do lean, but not being clear on the purpose for doing so. And that, that's the, that, that's right in the roof of the house, really. Secondly, focusing on the technical and ignoring the social, or conversely, focusing on the social and ignoring the technical. Um, in addition, we see people going very broad uh, before going deep. So the inch deep, mile wide view versus the inch wide mile deep view. 
trying to go too fast. So outstripping the ability to develop capability versus going too slow and losing sense of urgency and excitement. Um, and, and also letting perfection be the enemy or of the better or settling for better instead of striving for perfection. Uh, in addition, not being mindful of culture or underlying thinking or being overly cautious of culture so it becomes an excuse. Um, and losing sight that lean is a means to solve problems at every level, um, fractally, if you like, in every activity. So what really is LTF? So John Shook first shared this in January 2014, and um, it was an attempt to articulate the critical dimensions to be addressed when applying lean thinking and practice to, uh, to a situation. However, we'd been researching the ideas for a few years prior, and the research started with the question, how can organisations and individuals be more successful in using lean thinking and practice to transform? There's been a long history of looking at how to use lean thinking and practice more effectively. At times, the lean community, um, you know, some of you out there have, have either overly focused on tools or overly focused on the social side of, of, of change. And, and the community's um, influenced by what it reads and by what people are doing. And, you know, I think that's an entirely natural, a natural thing. Initially, the work focused on the process and people elements the two pillars of the house and we incorporated the purpose stroke problem to solve element the roof shortly after uh, john incorporated element four the management system and leadership behaviors and five the basic thinking element in the early 2010s and by 2012 we had several organizations actively experimenting with the framework recognizing that success requires balance in each of these five dimensions so to explain the, trans, the, the LTF, we've borrowed the house metaphor from Toyota. The house comprises foundations, two pillars and a roof. Of course, many of your organisations are aware of Toyota's production system house and many firms have tried to emulate or build their own versions, often by copying the elements. However, the lean transformation framework is very different in its intent. Um, instead of listing the tools and techniques used or even the principles, things like standardised work, Jidoka and just in time, for example, we're seeking a way to communicate the questions one needs to think about when embarking on a lean transformation. Um, the lean transformation framework contends that the successful implementation of lean thinking requires change on five dimensions. Lean thinking has a point of view on each of those five. Firstly, uh, lean always starts with the customer, asking what value we need to provide. The question, what problem are we trying to solve, is fractal, like a snowflake. It applies equally to the whole organisation, a team or an individual. How are you doing organisationally and individually with this question? Does your organisation have a clear purpose? Do individuals have clear line of sight to it and understand their contribution to that purpose and what problems they should be tackling? Secondly, how do we do and improve the actual work? So what's the work to be done to solve the problem? This is also fractal from individual standardized work level to value stream or enterprise value stream level. Have you defined your current state, what your target future state is and what steps and experiments are needed to close the gaps between current and target or future condition? Having defined the work to be done, we now ask what capabilities we need to do and improve the work to provide the value. Capability development is needed on at least two dimensions capability to do the work and capability to improve the work. The design of the management system and leadership behaviours is key to designing the work and developing the capability. We shared our views on management systems for performance and improvement in our last webinar. They're intrinsic to sustaining progress and further improvement. Are you asking specific questions with a view to this, linking back to the purpose of the organisation? The final question challenges our basic thinking or assumptions about how we do things and conduct ourselves. 
with lean thinking, it's easy, easier to act your way into a new way of thinking than think your way into a new way of acting. Uncovering your basic thinking mindset and assumptions helps articulate the thinking mindset and assumptions needed. Ono described the Toyota production system as a revolution in consciousness, developed not by grand design, but by problem solving and designing experiments, TPS as the thinking people system. So with the background covered, I'll now hand you over to David Marriott to talk you through our teach poster method. Thanks, Dave. Um, so before getting into sort of purpose and process, um, just like to explain why we use this teach poster concept. So for a sustainable lean transformation, we're strong believers in the concept of leaders as teachers. So that is leaders who take the time to teach and coach their team on the job to develop their capabilities rather than relying on separate functions to do it for them. As you can appreciate, the benefits of doing this are huge in terms of advancing your lean journey better, faster and cheaper. But the challenge is how to provide materials that enable leaders to do that. So after a number of years of research and experimentation, we've found this teach poster concept uh, works best. <clears throat> so rather than a 100 page PowerPoint slide deck, we've tried to distill the subject matter down onto one piece of paper, a bit like an A3. We found that this is much less daunting for the leaders to use, uh, also much more informal than sort of sitting down in a classroom and looking at a screen. All the posters uh, that we're developing have a similar layout and structure, um, so making them easier to follow and remember. And as you can see, we try and use images and pictures over words to stimulate interest in discussion. Um, a facilitation guide has been written for each of the posters, covering the important steps, key points and reasons for each of the images to assist uh, the leader when they're starting out to teach. And obviously we can uh, put the poster up in a workspace for future reference rather than sort of it being in hidden on PCs somewhere. OK, so we're going to go through the upper portion of the Lean Transformation Framework poster that we've um, recently developed. And for all our topics, we always start with the Lean Transformation Framework and then cover purpose, process and people. So Dave's just uh, explained the LTF, so really we'll move on to purpose which positions the LTF and why is it important, uh, process the conditions and considerations required about applying it, and people, the roles and responsibilities required to make it happen. So what is the purpose of the LTF? Well, in short, the LTF helps us uh, apply lean thinking and practice. It gives us a better understanding of the factors required for a successful lean transformation. What do we mean by transformation? Uh, there are a few definitions regarding the term, but this caterpillar butterfly picture paints a thousand words, we think. Transformation is about a marked change. It could be in terms of form, nature, character or appearance. In a business context, transformation is about profound change that orientates the organisation in a new direction and takes it to an entirely different level of effectiveness. The LCF doesn't provide a recipe of do's and don'ts telling you what you should be implementing. Instead, it asks five questions, not five answers, to help you apply lean thinking and practice to your unique situation. By tackling each dimension to addressing the questions, we avoid the lean no-no of prescriptively giving solutions, as is typical of many lean deployment approaches. Thus, we can have a dynamic approach to transformation in which each organisation, team or individual creates its own unique approach one that helps them achieve their unique purpose through practical utilization of deep wisdom embedded in the lean practices that have evolved over the years through rigorous PDCA. Of course, we're concerned with change using lean thinking and practice, and so the framework is grounded in a unique set of principles. So lean principles that have a specific point of view. The first of these is that lean is value driven. And this was explained in the book Lean Thinking by Jim and Dan uh, and identifies the principles behind lean thinking. Define value precisely from the perspective of the end customer in terms of the specific product, the specific capabilities offered at a specific price and time. As Ono said, all industrial thinking must begin by differentiating value for the customer from MUDA, the Japanese term for waste. 
Well, seemingly straightforward, this step is actually hard to carry out and for a very simple reason. For any product as complex as a toothpick and for any service more complicated than a haircut, value must flow across the companies uh, and through many departments within each company. Although the entity along the route may or may not define value for the end customer, it will certainly define value for itself to turn a profit, to advance the careers of those in the department, and to utilise existing assets fully, and so on and so forth. But when all of those definitions of value are added up, however, they often conflict or cancel one another out. Consequently, failure to specify value correctly before applying lean techniques can easily result in providing the wrong product or service in a highly efficient way, or pure, pure waste. Lean thinking has a point of view regarding problem solving. So problem solving means grasping the situation to understand where we are and then understand where we want to get to a target condition or conditions for a set of factors that help us explain what we're trying to change. In other words, we need to define problems we're trying to solve the gap or gaps between the way things are now and the way that they are supposed to be or where we want to be in the future. What gaps are we trying to close? The gaps should be made visible. This gives individuals and organisations a better chance of closing them. And that's where the lean transformation framework comes in. It's a framework for thinking about the transformation and what we're trying to do. By posing the five questions across the LTF, we're defining a process to expose gaps um, so that plans can be made to effectively close them. Progress on one dimension over the others, however, does not end up with a lasting transformation. We need to avoid Mura or unevenness and Muri or overburden when considering the five dimensions and ask all of the questions. As Dave explained, the most common imbalance we see is between process and the people elements. Some approaches tend to take a tools based approach, blindly applying them to every process regardless of the problems. Others focus more on the people aspect and training to create a culture of continuous improvement, expecting that things will get better. Our experience tells us that it doesn't and the transformation either fails or runs out of steam. The point is you need to try and achieve a balance across all five dimensions as indicated by the different colours on the scale. So we'll now move on to process to review the key elements to consider when applying the LTF. What we've learned over the years is that each company's teams or individual circumstances are unique and therefore we need a situational approach to the transformation. Being situational means the, that every application of lean thinking and practice is going to be specific and different as each situation has a different aim or purpose. Being grounded in a common set of principles yet situational in application provides a rich opportunity for the development of truly profound wisdom. This is why asking questions, not copying answers that someone else has thought through for their situation is required. In terms of the process, the LTF can be described as fractal, like a snowflake. So no matter what scale you look at it, it looks the same. The questions can be applied to an individual, a team, a site or a whole organisation, therefore. And you can start asking these questions at the value creating work or at the system level, thinking through from customer value. And the same questions apply at all levels, as everyone needs to be aligned and engaged in identifying and solving problems that support the value driven purpose of the organisation. Lean thinking and practice makes us deeply reflect on how we can improve a situation, improve the organisation or improve ourselves, or ideally all three. Fundamentally, the process of successful lean transformation rests on applying plan, do, check, act cycles of experimentation at every level, everywhere, all the time, in small steps. The PDC CA cycles provide us with a dynamic approach to transform each situation. Learning from the collective experience of the lean community, we know that tackling the five dimensions through continually and thoroughly addressing all five questions is both necessary and sufficient for a successful transformation. As mentioned, the process for applying the LTF follows PDCA. 
we start by learning about the LTF, thinking about each of the five dimensions and asking each of the five connected questions. Part of that question process involves factually identifying our current state, agreeing the next future state, and then developing plans which include the experiments we've decided to make in an attempt to close those gaps between our current and future state. The process isn't always linear, hence the two-way arrows between the boxes on the chart. And having run an experiment, we obviously need to check the results and adjust our approach based on what we learnt. Not only does this sometimes result in a new current state from the cycle um, from which the cycle starts again, but also this learn by doing deepens our understanding, helping us with the next generation level of thinking. And some folk call it learning. OK, I'll now hand over to Peter, who will cover the people aspects when applying the LTF. OK, thanks, Dave. So the people dimension of the LTF at a high level is all about making clear the roles and responsibilities for everybody. Uh, we know that lean thinking and practice offers a unique perspective on this. It's a different uh, sort of DNA the, versus a more traditional organisation. Each of the elements shown are an ideal state, a standard to achieve from the way we should act, think and behave to get the best from lean thinking and practice. We think each element also needs to be present in your transformation. The first of these roles and responsibilities in Lean involves and engages everyone. It's not a set of principles and practices for a few experts in the organisation. And the people doing the work need to be supported by the leadership to involve them in identifying and solving problems that support the value driven purpose. We can engage everyone through uh, involving them in team working. A lean organisation realises it can achieve more value from customers by people working together. Together, everyone achieves more. So structured teamwork, it enables people to become self-reliant in problem solving and continuous improvement. To support this thinking, the people doing the work should also be described respectfully as team members rather than employees or operators or staff. Teamwork, like so many elements of lean thinking, is fractal. Teamwork can be in a team, between departments, between sites and across the organisation in a value stream. Good team working also supports individuals to take ownership. Each of us is responsible and accountable for our performance, getting the work done and improving it at the same time. OK, so next really now we're going to look at uh, the process of doing the work, which is integrated with the process of improving the work. So it's the leaders who must ultimately take ownership for developing people to improve the work. They cannot leave this alone to people outside the organisation. Otherwise, the day to day activities and behaviours will not become embedded in the organisational culture. Because the leaders really set the tone for the organisation. So they must develop themselves first before developing others. All of us can be leaders, though, and we can start by developing ourselves. People development activities need to be planned around developing skill rather than one off training activities. And they should be focused around identifying and solving real business problems that contribute to the value driven purpose. OK, so making improvements means we need to continually challenge the way we do the work today to make the work easier and drive improvement and innovation. So each of us must challenge, but do so respectfully. We must make every effort to understand each other and take responsibility for those challenges. Respectfully challenging the situation also requires us to be open and honest in our communication with each other. There is no place for blame when solving problems and closing gaps. Being open and honest, but without blame, is one of the ways we can build mutual trust. And trust is built when the leaders set clear expectations on the required activities and behaviours needed to enable the value driven purpose. And leaders should support and hold people accountable to these expectations through teaching and coaching, recognising and giving constructive feedback. This enables the organisation to create the right culture. So all of us must be impatient, though, for action to achieve our short term goals, but whilst recognising that having a long term perspective can give us the best results. Achieving the right pace is critical when applying lean thinking and practice. Going too fast leads to the change in activities and behaviours not being embedded into the culture, as previously mentioned. But being too slow 
people will lose the motivation and momentum to make the change actually happen. But we cannot be passive. We have knowledge of lean thinking and practice, but we must recognise that the only way that uh, the real way is learning by doing approach. That's the only way to change our underlying thinking. So learning by doing also requires that you reflect on what you have learned so far from the point of the unique situation or also personally. After an improvement activity, we should always ask the question, what did you learn? So a deeper reflection can be carried out. Having the humility to learn is a critical aspect when applying lean thinking and practice. Nobody knows everything. Leaders should learn together with their team members to apply lean thinking and practice to their daily work. Through learning by doing, each of us can be learners for life and every day can be a school day. So that's the end of the purpose process people bit. And we're gonna hand over David. I think you're gonna try and facilitate some questions on all of that information now. David, you're on yep, mute again. Thanks. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I was just unmuting. I was just trying to clear it, clear the question. So um, only one question so far. So either it's completely clear or we've lost everybody. Um, so Car Carlos has asked, considering the people dimension, does the LTF consider any change management model? a process driven approach or other, please clarify. So Carlos, can you expand on that question a little bit for us? Or unmute yourself and uh, and ask away. Okay, thank you. Um, transformation requires a, a, a strong change and there are different change management models in the market, like Satir, Kobe Ross. Uh, I would like to understand if LTF considers this kind of change model for, for transforming the organization. Yeah, I think I think that's a, that's quite an interesting question. The, the purpose of the LTF is not as a it's not a model for change. Actually, when we first started doing research into this, uh, John Shook called it a model. He called it the lean transformation model. And some of us still sort of say oh, it's the lean transformation model. But actually, we ch it got changed. The, the, the name got changed because what it is, is it's a set of questions for getting you to think about the way in which you should change and and it's a set of questions which from our research we're saying that whenever you have an imbalance or one of those five questions hasn't really been answered well in the organization that there's a high likelihood that you will end up with a failure of of doing what you thought you were trying to do so yeah that's a that's a good question yes there are models um uh, robert who's on the call somewhere um has has also sent an email through about uh, the agile manifesto and the uh, and safe and when you actually look at that that is a set of things to do it's a tick list and what we're saying is we've been doing this for 30 years now and we're saying that actually doesn't work the, the the tick list it's highly unlikely that the tick list style approach um actually doesn't work and what if you think about the the, the i think it was dave mentioned the comment about um taichi ono said there's, there wasn't any grand plan what they were doing is solving problems as those problems came up so the, the you know the 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 what what we've what we've realized in in our um in actually researching this set of questions is that the questions and and the answers to the questions are situational um and really depend on what the organization is is trying to do i mean you know if an organization is trying 
to really provide value for customers, then some of the answers in those individual blocks are going to be very, very different to if um, a uh, an investment vehicle has bought the company and they want to flip it and turn a profit. And they'll end up doing very, very different things. So um, so I think that's that it's a good question, but that's not the intent of this framework. The framework is about the things that you need to think about when you embark on the change, not the the, the necessarily the, um, uh, the those those types of models um, <clears throat> that you've that you've alluded to or, or describe you know describe there. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Michael, whilst coaching my teams in lean thinking, they think it will end in redundancies. How do I put a positive approach to it? Uh, Pete, do you want to have a go at that? Yeah, I've been there, seen that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you've really got to make clear what, uh, you know, strategic changes are you know, for the organisation and don't mix the two up. So, you know, before you start activity, you've got to make, you know, people clear that their jobs are not a threat. Yeah, and, uh, and if anything is going on in the organisation at the same time, you know, around that, you need to make it really clear that it's not connected with this. Yeah, uh, otherwise, you, you know, your people will not buy into it at all. Yeah, so, you know, communicating that upfront before you start doing anything is, is absolutely key. Uh, and making sure that if there are things going on in the organization in a wider entity, you know, where people are being made redundant, then, you know, this change isn't going to, uh, you know, what we're doing with this activity and around the, the things we're doing is not going to uh, uh, influence that. Yeah, because otherwise you're asking people to self-select themselves out of the organization, which is just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, people are not going to do that. And as soon as soon as you sack someone from using lean thinking and practice, then you know the rest of the that will make it very very difficult uh, i've been in a situation where a plant manager did that and he had to re-employ all the people uh, and get them back and then promise not to do that again yeah because they all walked out you know and rightly so you know so uh, you know we need to separate out strategy and redundancies and things like that that show different business decisions than uh, you know doing that through lean thinking and practice for sure yeah does that answer yeah. your question, Michael? There's no easy answer. <laughs> no, no, it's very different. Yes, yeah, good explanation. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks. And, and another spin on that is when, when we're spinning up new new products, the, mm. the sort of wording I'm getting from management or the comments is we've got to make this a lean team with as many staff as possible. And they're mm. taking the lean as a as a cutting people out, as you, as you say, of the organisation yeah. or, or not superfluous roles or whatever. Keep, keep, keep the number of people in the product team to a minimum and they're using the word lean for that yeah that's not lean you know lean's about uh, creating value isn't it so yeah you really yeah. need to squash that as soon as you can yeah yeah and get those leaders awesome. recorrected on it yeah because it's yeah. going to make it very difficult later on yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it's it, you know it, it's it's been across the history of the term it's been a really a real difficulty uh, and uh, and you know the, the the way to describe it is the term lean came about as a contrast to mass production. So mass production was about, you know, bigger and bigger machines, uh, more and more volume, um, and economies of scale style thinking. Lean production wasn't for production. It was it was versus the mass production system, which encompassed, encompasses the enterprise, you know, designing stuff, building it, uh, the supply of it, the customer service of it, etc. And and yeah. what lean production was about was was actually about doing exactly what the customer wants when they want it in the quantities wanted, um, and gearing the gearing the system to the needs of the customer. Very very unfortunate that that really hasn't ended up. But, you know, it, it's the Chinese whisper type thing where yeah. people take the English lean term and then they they make it into okay so it's just less people and uh, and, and it, that's not what it is at all but yeah. um the, you know that that's our fault for being rubbish at explaining it to be honest I think the original 
term was fragile, wasn't it, Dave? But they, they thought that wouldn't go down too well. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there were two camps in the in the research of when <clears throat> when they were coming up with the term. Um, one camp was was the human resource side people, um, John Paul McDuffie and so on. And the, and what they were doing is they they said, look, this is fragile because because one break in it and it and it all it all falls to bits it's type tops. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and Jim Womack and and a couple of the others said, well, we can't sell that. We, we can't sell that to anybody. Nobody will buy that. Um, and their alternative was this idea: instead of it being mass production, it was lean production, and that was what what was what was used. The, interestingly, relating it to Robert's point, the term agile was also banded about at the same time. And that wasn't that wasn't felt to explain the higher level view, um, you know. And yet here we are, 30 years later, and you know, in a couple of different environments, the agility thing has, you know, took off in terms of scrum teams, got rejuvenated, you know, the agile manifesto, and you know, mm-hmm. and, and there we go, off 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 we go again, type of thing. So yeah, yeah interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, so. So, so a couple of others. So, prob- uh, Robert, problem that you see is many uh, many get support to develop skills, but what about capability? Yeah, exactly. The the question is, what really is capability? And we're, we'll talk about that in the case. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll hold that for 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 now. Uh, Carlos. Um, does LTF have the ambition to measure, monitor the organization's maturity level? Um, OK, so y- yes, yes, you can. And a few companies, what they've been doing is they've been um, using the flow chart that Dave um, showed you to basically have this as a PDCA cycle. So you can have a PDCA cycle on each one of those five dimensions and on the framework as a whole and then basically see whether or not you close the gaps that you thought you got which is kind of a problem solving uh view of um of of doing changes but but as per you know one of the things that i would be very very cautious of is saying you know level one is this level two is this level three is this level four is this level five is this and we want to be level five that's competency frameworks and we'll talk about that in the case as well, because I, I think that is completely the wrong path to go down. It's the path that a lot of people are going down because they, they want the awards and everything. But it, but actually, it doesn't that that is not in line necessarily with solving individual problems. Problems that are situational to to the to the organization. Um, Andrew, so with the principle being on training the team to be self-sufficient to be able to run their own lean reviews, is there a framework to ensure that the lean initiatives are being run correctly or within an agreed approach? Oh, interesting. All right. right. So with, with Dave, yeah, I think we've got we have partnered with people to develop a team working process, yeah, which includes developing that system on performance management and improvement management. Uh, you know, there's a whole kind of learning process around that, Andrew. So if you're interested, let us know and we'll share that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Vicky. Uh, hi, hi, Vicky from uh, Taylor and Francis. Um, do you have any advice on what I've sometimes thought of as customer confusion? So core processes where an external client wearing one hat is a key customer on one process. But when the same client is wearing another hat, they are technically performing a supplier function on another process. Oh, and so no longer the one setting what's the uh, the CTQ. Ooh, right, okay. Dave. Right, let's hold been, that and think yeah, about while we more. while we do the while we do the next bit. Yeah. So you two put your thinking caps on while I do my <laughs> bit on the case. Trying to understand That's, the question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, so so this is the part of the webinar where the theory becomes a bit more real. 
Uh, we're going to take a look at the lean transformation framework in practice with with, with a case. It's, it's a, part of our so part of our research um, with, um, with 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 uh, with organisations is about defining problems and closing gaps. And in the learning value stream, we have a quite a loose but worldwide club of Toyota dealers. And each one of those originally came together to learn how to apply the Toyota way to their sales, service and parts operations. Um, in 2011, we started working with Halfway Toyota in South Africa and Botswana. And the case is well documented. There's a number of talks on our YouTube channel. Uh, Terry's on the on the call today. Mornay's on the call today. Both of those have have done talks at our summits and, and and are on the YouTube channel. And we've also done a number of articles on the Lean Global Network's Planet Lean website. Um, at the highest level in the organization, they really needed to work through the real life challenges of Toyota's strategy of becoming a mobility company. So I don't know whether people follow this, but Akio Toyo, Toyota um, made this uh, this announcement that Toyota was to become a mobility company. And the question really is, well, what does that mean for customers and the dealer processes that, that, that they're responsible for? So um, we always start with the question, what problem are we trying to solve? And um, for those that are unaware, here's Toyota's global vision. You can pick that up on the on the website, the reference is, um, is, is on the slide. The question posed was how to balance the needs of the vehicle supplier, i.e. Toyota, with the need, needs of halfway as a car retailer or dealer. And um, what, the, what the team did was that early in their journey, the senior team started to think this through using the Lean Transformation Framework. This illustration is from 2013, so 12 months before John made it public because we were doing the research at the time and, it, and it's actually the second iteration of purpose that the senior team developed uh, using the LTF inev inevitably led us to think about customer value in halfway's team x strategy both the customer value and the goals of the organization are defined and the team settled upon guaranteeing hassle-free mobility to define that 100 percent customer fulfillment Delivering cars right first time on time, every time in less time, was a key to customer value. And that's the starting point of the transformation as purpose is now defined, gaps are understood at the organisational level. Halfway, um, next, we, next we turn our attention to the first of our two pillars, and we have called this operational or process improvement. It's an area that's probably the most familiar with lean thinking uh, and with lean thinkers. What we're doing here is we're focusing on the work that creates value for customers. Um, it's what most people that do lean see as, be, as being lean, but it's really only one element of the system. Here we're asking the question, how do we do and improve the actual value creating work? So with hassle-free mobility and 100% customer fulfillment as a purpose, value was defined so halfway called it process you can see that in the right hand side of the uh, of the slide and, and for both the sales and service value streams this is the second version of the ltf highlighted the need to stabilize to make problems visible to focus on brilliant ba basics and be easy to do business with so as an example, a service department worked on while you wait service for predictable jobs in order to be able to do that activity. So in some sites, you know, they've got tens of sites. In some sites, that meant two technicians working on a car at the same time to compress the time. Some sites had one bay. Some sites used two bays. The technicians develop standardized work processes to service cars in agreed time while the customer waits. So hassle free mobility. The picture on the left is the technicians working on the standardized work early in the journey. It's probably 2012, 2013, maybe something like that. The picture on the right is a two stage bay for predictable work in the same workshop, actually, four or five years later. Um, this table shows the improvement. 
in 2012, one ramp completed four to five cars per day. That's typical of the industry. It's still where the industry is today. By 2018, one ramp and one bay could complete 48 cars per day. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out just how, what a big impact that is. Moreover, lead time had been slashed from eight hours to 20 minutes, door to door at 41 minutes, including cleaning the, cleaning the vehicle. So next we turn to uh, our attention to the first of the two, uh, to, to the, uh, to, to the uh, second of the two pillars. Um, and that's improving, to improve the work, we must turn the attention to capability development. So to Robert's point, really. And here we're asking the question, how do we develop the capabilities we need? So here our target condition is to build capability so people can do and improve themselves. At halfway, Terry articulated this as trying to develop 1,067 problem solvers. That was the number of people in the group at the time, i.e. everyone in the organization solving problems. If you take the old skills matrix classifications, we can look at ability from level one, having knowledge, through understanding, being capable, being able to do a job well, teach the job and coach others. It's interesting that it's really only knowledge of the work that is suitable to teach in a classroom off the job. Levels two through to four are better taught with actual problems and situations on the job with mentoring from capable superiors. You can't develop skill just by sitting in a classroom. You have to practice. And capability development is significantly different to what most teams that say they are doing lean actually do. Often the focus is on certification rather than capability development. Am I at level five on the on the on the group's version of, uh, of, uh, of what good looks like, for example? So often the focus is on certification rather than capability development. The competency systems are judged by sometimes an outside body, often developed by people with little world, uh, real world experience. Um, certified by people with no real world experience and the sold to the organization and improvement director is justification that the organization is doing something the real purpose behind these schemes is to make a profit for the certification provider and that's done by building reliance on outside help rather than building capability internally to solve the problems yourself so buyer beware really so at halfway, Terry realised that the, the target condition is to build capability so people can do and improve themselves. And that's the development of the 1067 problem solvers. Everyone in the organisation solving problems. In addition to the problem solving activities, the example also highlights the spread of the team leader concept to implement standardised work, the process they would use to align people to the purpose and the process for developing basic skills. So that you know you, you can you could take a look through that capability the people piece and see how that that's defined in terms of then thinking through the process and then back through to the uh, to, to the customer value in the center of the house our focus is on leadership and management so in particular we think about what management system we need and the leadership behaviors required to drive the transformation and that's tricky. There are elements of these dimensions within the transformation that aren't as easy to see as perhaps understanding and improving the actual work to be done. But some elements of this are well known. One example is the process for developing and deploying strategy using Hoshin Camry within the management system. A second example will be managing teams using processes such as daily team meetings or managing projects using Obeya rooms. It's also possible to define what leadership behaviours we need. What's more difficult to do is to understand how well that's being done on a daily basis. So we ran, and I think Halfway continues to run, a series of experiments not only to develop daily team meetings, but to build their effectiveness. Early experiments focused on visualization, standardization, and hey junka. So that, that means leveling in Japanese, making things level. Part of, the, uh, part of the team meeting activity is around visualization, but in particular developing PDCA in the visual management. The visualization should start the process of highlighting problems. 
and we've done some formal problem solving through A3 training. Uh, but at the Gemba, we've looked at the way leaders interact with the teams to develop problem solving capability. To do that, um, you can use a variety of techniques. So video team meetings and then watch them back with the people. That gives you an insight into group dynamics and also the strengths and weaknesses of the meetings. These are a couple of stills from a couple of those videos, the large pictures focusing on new car deliveries, the inset picture on a sales manager conducting a one on one sales performance review. Basic improvements in the management system when connected to the other fine four dimensions in the LTF resulted in a 500 percent increase in monthly sales. For the foundations of the house, uh, we refer to the basic thinking, the assumptions and mindset that underlies the entire system and drives the transformation itself. This is really about the basic beliefs we as individuals have about the way transformation works. These beliefs and mindset constitute the culture of the organisation. So to use a practical example, um, the senior team at Halfway believe that the people closest to, work, to the work would know the most about it. And that if we harness their knowledge so that problems can be solved um, by the people doing the work. So Terry's 1067 problem solvers. This thinking leads to the design of experiments to test that hypothesis and develop people at all levels. If the thinking weren't aligned in that direction and the assumption made that actually only a few people should be coming up with solutions, then we would have a very different approach. Perhaps we would have a boot camp and train a select few on advanced lean techniques or Six Sigma techniques. We'd create a continuous improvement organization. We'd identify projects that would give a return, but that wouldn't necessarily develop the organization thoroughly to meet the problem of everybody, everybody solving problems. So it isn't always so easy to see and connect the underlying thinking with what we do and what we would like to do. Um, another example, typically the underlying thinking in the dealer is to upsell. You sell work in addition to that which the vehicle is booked in for. That's how you make more money. If the organization now wants to focus on hassle free mobility and customer trust, lots of work must be done to undo, undo the upsell thinking. So um, working through each of the dimensions produced the halfway house. Uh, very different in its intent from the Toyota production system house, but based on some universal questions. What problem are we trying to solve? How do we do and improve the work? How do we develop the capabilities we need? What management system and leadership behaviours are required to support the new way of working? What basic assumptions or mindset underlie this change? Each of these questions is applicable to all organisations, from a developer and manufacturer of products, to a public service organization, to a retailer. You can apply these questions to a car producer, the fire brigade, or a seller and servicer of cars. And here's version two in its entirety. As we've discussed, the practical results of applying the framework are successful, quite successful. A definition of both customer and business purpose and articulation of what the organization is doing around the five dimensions with lean thinking and practice applied to the situation. Each site was unique, but 500% improvement in sales performance in one site, being able to do the same number of vehicles in two car spaces that were done in the whole workshop four years earlier, and industry leading return on sales are pretty good benefits. So I'll hand over to Peter to do a wrap up. Okay, thanks, Dave. So uh, now you've learnt more about the LTF and its importance in applying lean thinking and practice, what will your next steps be? So we recommend you start by defining the problems you need to solve as uh, given in the example that Dave's just been through around your value driven purpose, but for your actual level of influence in uh, your organisation, depending where you are. Remember though, to follow the PDCA process to identify the gaps in your current approach to lean thinking and practice. And those are the things that you will need to help solve the problems around. So to help you structure your thinking and develop your plans, you can use a proposal type A3 to make sure you follow a PDCA process. Uh, we also have an online course that explains the different types of A3 documents. Uh, it'll give you an overview and it's also got a blank A3 proposal template to use. 
So the uh, example that's going to come up now uh, is uh, uh, one that uh, I proposed uh, as a document to help develop an organisation with over 65 manufacturing plants globally. It shows how to address the major gaps in the, uh, in the approach uh, to applying lean thinking and practice, and that connects to achieving the business results as well. So at first, we didn't have a lot of uh, data for our current state analysis because this was really high level. But once we got some basic data, it was a real eye opener for the senior management. And they discovered how the overfocus on process, because they were a very process or, or orientated organization, uh, led to an imbalance of developing people's capability. Yeah. Uh, we are especially low in problem solving capability and also in the halfway example show. And this had reinforced a firefighting mindset in the organization, and it also added in cost and uh, through containment. So by developing a plan of uh, learning by doing to make the leaders become the teachers and coaches of problem solving, we managed to close the gap on the committed business targets within the first year. So it's just an example that you really need to structure your thoughts around that. OK, so at LEA, uh, we partner with companies to help develop uh, your approach and guide them in using the right approach to solving their unique situational problems. So we're continually researching the application of lean thinking and practice in many different areas of the LTF uh, to develop better, faster and cheaper learning processes for our And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.